Hello, my name is Angela Dispensieri. I'm a physician at the Mayo Clinic. Many of you may have heard a little bit about the measles virus as a treatment for patients with multiple myeloma. Um, this is a concept that was uh, envisaged by my colleague, Dr. Stephen Russell, um, who's a colleague at the Mayo Clinic and a number of other folks. Uh, but the principle of using measles to treat multiple myeloma and other cancers actually arose um, from the observation of a, a young boy in Africa who was reported to have an aggressive lymphoma but developed childhood measles um, and he had a dramatic remission of his cancer. And so that made scientists think that perhaps viruses could have an effect on killing cancer. So flash forward many years, um, here we've uh, designed basically a measles virus vaccine strain that's slightly modified and we administer very, very large doses of it. Actually, it's about 100 million times more than an actual vaccination for measles virus. Um, and the goal is that this can attack myeloma preferentially above normal tissues and kill them. So uh, this measles virus is actually not the, the measles virus that children would get. It's actually been tamed um, through multiple generations. Uh, and so, again, just like the, the measles uh, vaccine, uh, you don't get measles from the vaccine. It's a very tame, tame version of measles. So even giving, the concept was even giving very large doses of it should be safe. So far, no patient has actually developed over measles. The other modification to this um, vaccine strain of measles is that there's a little protein that was added so it can allow for concentration of iodine so we could actually track and image where the virus goes with regular scans like thyroid scans. As with all new treatments, uh, we do a what's called a phase one trial. And what this is, is a dose escalation study. So the initial three patients get a very low dose of the drug uh, because again the objective of phase one study is safety. And so three patients are treated and side effects are watched for and if no serious side effects are seen another three patients are treated at a higher dose etc etc. And so in this trial we've gone up um, basically about six-fold or six times, which would be a hundred million times of drug the last patients received as compared to the first patients. At the lowest dose levels, we saw uh, very little to no toxicity. When we got to the highest dose level, um, we started to see both some activity uh, and also some side effects. Uh, the patients, the six patients treated at the highest levels um, experienced fever during the time of the infusion and a few hours after it that could last for a few days. Uh, a couple of patients had significant headache associated with it. Uh, one patient uh, developed a uh, phlebitis or a, like a clot in her arm where she had received the virus. Um, but subsequent after the infusion day and a, and a week after, most patients had no side effects. As far as response, one patient had a very dramatic response, and this is the patient you may have heard of. Um, she was also a patient who had fevers to um, over uh, or about 105 degrees Fahrenheit uh, during her infusion and the phlebitis in the arm. Um, but she also had a, a drop in her serum free light chain and resolution of uh, all myeloma cells in the bone marrow on the bone marrow aspirate. And she had a number of plasma cytomas or, or lumps of myeloma growing from her bones, and some were actually even visible, especially one, one or two that were growing out of her forehead. Um, and these uh, shrunk. Uh, they shrunk visibly to the naked eye and also by PET scan imaging. And this was quite dramatic and impressive. Um, we also uh, were able to see the virus 
in the tumor through those special um, scans that I mentioned. And so that was a very important observation as well, that the virus was getting to the target and causing improvement in the multiple myeloma. Another patient also had a very brief response, I mean, a matter of weeks, uh, and so that wasn't lasting. But again, it was proof of principle, and we're in very, very early stages, but it's exciting because this is the first time that uh, a virus has been delivered intravenously to a patient with myeloma, and, ha and the patient achieved a complete response. She did relapse at about nine months. Um, one of the um, lumps that was, uh, had been growing from her forehead um, did regrow, and her bone marrow was still negative, and the other tumors didn't grow back. Um, so she received radiation to that uh, lesion or that plasma cytoma, and uh, she's doing quite well at the present time. So the next place we're going is to a phase two study. Um, we will be reopening in September. Uh, we'll be using, we'll be uh, inviting patients who have, uh, don't have titers or significant antibodies to measles virus. Remember, we're all vaccinated as children, and so many of us will have uh, measles titers. Um, patients with myeloma, uh, partially because myeloma itself is uh, an immunosuppressive disease, um, they don't have measles titers, even though they may have had uh, measles or vaccination as a child. Um, and also the chemotherapy that patients with very advanced myeloma uh, have uh, will reduce their titers. Um, the trial will only really be uh, for about roughly three dozen patients, and there will be eligibility criteria, but we're looking for, at that time, it'll include patients who really have had a number of prior therapies. This is not something that we're um, thinking of using in patients with newly diagnosed disease, because it is still very experimental. Um, we're hopeful, um, but there's a lot of work yet to be done and uh, we hope to share that information with you when we actually have it.